Hello everyone, this is Garrett, and this is Painkiller, Battle Out of Hell. And we are about to do level 2, Ludi Park, where we have to kill no more than 88 enemies. And that can be a little bit tricky. We're pretty much gonna be keeping the same tarot cards that we had previously, having golden cards that last longer. Enemies that can't hurt us. And dealing a little bit more damage. I think I'll keep that. Actually, yeah, I think I'll keep that one. Um, there is one secret in this level which is a little bit fiddly. And I found it to be a little bit easier if you have the triple haste card. And that may sound a bit odd. But it may make the secret a little bit easier to get. Which is, is it's a little bit of an odd one. And you'll see it when we get there. But I'll just keep it like that. Keeping the mercy card because it's ridiculously good. And as such, we're just going to get started. And here we are starting off with our flamethrower with no ammo. It's actually also sort of a machine gun, which is pretty cool. And uh, let's admire the music in Looney Park for a moment. I say this because the moment the first enemy spawns, we're not going to hear this music anymore ever again. So I, I hope you don't like this music too much <laughs> because the music that's coming up, in my opinion, is considerably better. And uh, it's also the music that's going to be playing the entire time. So without further ado, let's move on and let the music play. So there's a bunch of clowns. We're not going to kill them because we need to not kill as many enemies as we want. Because again, we have to make sure the maximum amount of enemies we kill is 88. And I find this to be the easiest way. We're going to climb up that particular pole. It's actually really easy to climb. And there is the first secret item over there, which is some health, which is always nice. And then we're going to jump from thing to thing to this particular structure over here where secret number two is waiting for us which is a box of ammo that box of ammo is kind of nice because it gives ammo for all of our guns and that's kind of nice because we didn't have any ammo for our flamethrower slash machine gun type thing and that thing's actually pretty decent so having picked that up we're just gonna move on and kill all these guys with a shotgun because while the machine gun slash flamethrower is very good so is the shotgun. The shotgun never becomes bad, really, in this game. It's pretty much, at all times, one of the best weapons you can get. But I will say that the Battle Out of Hell weaponry is absolutely not disappointing at all. And is going to be used quite frequently. Now, moving on, killing everything there is. The reason why the music keeps playing is because we are not killing the first batch of enemies. And it is actually possible to just continue through the level, even though those enemies are not dead. The main difference is, is that there's no checkpoints when we do this. Like, the checkpoint basically waits for you to get that one first. And we're never going to get that one because there's clowns there and they're basically never going to escape. There's also, like, this part of the level over here. You can actually go there by bunny hopping to the other side. But there's not actually anything there. It's basically just a whole lot of nothing. And we'll be seeing more of that area as we move through the level anyway. But that's a little bit later. For now, we're going to move on, go through this thing. If you can go through this thing, it means you've killed enough enemies, basically, to activate the checkpoint normally. And we get a bunch of these guys, which are more than a little bit annoying. They spawn, or spawn, they rather throw a whole bunch of those little red orbs over there, which cause the red smoke, which we actually saw in the original Painkiller as well. In, I think it was like the second level or something, where there's a bunch of enemies with staffs which also emit that same red smoke. If you get hit by it, then you're going to take a, a little bit of damage for a while. It's kind of a poison effect, and it's mostly just kind of annoying. So after killing those guys, we move on through this gate, back to the little starting area. We fight more of these, these clowns. Clowns have a ranged attack, but as long as you just move from side to side, they probably will never hit you. They're mostly just scary looking, but it's fair enough because it matches the music very well. I actually really like the music here, and in a way, I'm kind of glad that the music is constantly playing the battle music because I actually like it a lot more than um, the music for just being in peaceful mode, I guess. So I'm just going to kill these guys with our trusty flamethrower. We don't have a lot of flamethrower ammo, unfortunately, but it is actually a pretty decent gun. It does damage over time, as you would expect fire to do. And uh, oh no, it's definitely not bad. I would sort of recommend not using the machine gun too much for reasons that become a little bit more obvious later. Due to the fact that we have tarot cards, we have nothing to worry about, but if you're in a situation where you cannot use the Iron Wheel tarot card three times, 
then you want to get as much health as possible and want to retain as much of your machine gun ammo as possible at the same time for reasons which I will explain shortly. Now I believe pretty much everything here is dead and if so then we should be able to go through this thing and indeed we can. Before we go there I'm actually gonna go over here because killing all the enemies here will open this particular booth. Usually there's a little wall in front of it but after a while it opens up. You can step inside it and doing so opens up this door which is another secret area. It's secret area number three out of four I believe. There's a bunch of jump pads which let you go over this acid type stuff. The acid barely does any damage, but it does help to just keep your health as high as possible at all times, so might as well be a little bit careful. Grab the holy items and, more importantly, the health and armor power-ups, which puts us at very nice numbers of health and armor. And we jump out of the window to get outside again. Now there is one more secret, and that is the secret I was talking about at the start of this level. And there's effectively two ways of getting it. It's in there. As you can see, it sort of opens and closes when you shoot it. One way of getting it is by just jumping on top of this thing and then just trying to jump off it into there. Which can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, and sometimes you'll just fall off. And there is actually an easier way of doing it, which I'm just going to show off now. Just pretend that I did it right the first time and didn't fall off like a little silly billy. But you can actually just climb all the way up here, and from here you can just jump down on the top of it. And while you're on the top of it, you can sort of fly off like that. And getting in here, it looks really easy, but thats I'm genuinely surprised it happened that fast. Usually, it's really fiddly to get in here at all, uh, because you'll just get stuck on the thing. But if you ha are having trouble with it, just try like making it close again by just walking backwards slightly and then just attack and walk forward. Preferably on the right side when you're looking in this direction. Now the real problem lies in actually getting out of here again. Also you can, um, one side note is that you can like bounce this corpse around a bunch and it'll actually like drop a bunch of money which is kind of hilarious because that's just one of the mechanics of painkiller really. But now we're actually gonna try to get out of here. I said before that this is actually easier with the uh, slow motion card. That, again, pretty rare. <laughs> uh, usually I just get stuck in there and I'm not entirely sure how to fully get around it but if you have a shotgun and sort of just hold forward and left and shoot in the middle of the door it tends to nudge you out but sometimes it doesn't it's really fiddly sometimes but if you are having trouble with it then you can use the triple haste card and then just shoot it a billion times with the secondary fire of the painkiller and you'll just clip through it after a while but I'd rather not have that card because of the area that's coming up again we have to make sure we don't kill 88 enemies, and that kind of means you can't kill that many enemies here. It's a nice thing that we didn't kill any of the clowns at the start, like there's still a bunch just hanging out right there. But if we touch this roller coaster thing, it starts moving, and we basically have to make sure we do not die. And with the tarot cards we have, and I'm just going to activate them immediately, it's a lot easier, as you can see, because we're not taking any damage right now. And... We don't really have control. All we can do now is shoot at enemies, which we obviously don't want to do because then we'll just lose our tarot card. And uh, you can just sort of look around, really. And the reason why the machine gun is good, of all things, is because you can shoot the big fire projectiles. And that kind of becomes pretty important if you, like, don't have the tarot card. Because you'll still be able to survive as long as you keep your health high enough because then you can just shoot the projectiles as much as possible and you shouldn't be in any real trouble. You will take a lot of damage. You'll probably be very close to death if you do use that strategy, but I uh, I just like to be safe and use my tarot cards because it just makes everything a little bit more manageable. And we have the chance to look around. This is basically the area that I was talking about. You can bunny hop to this place, but there's just nothing to do here. There's just a whole bunch of buildings. They actually look pretty similar to the buildings that we've seen in the level already. But there are also some unique buildings. There's a Ferris wheel somewhere around here, but I'm not actually sure where it is. There's a castle in the middle over here floating over some fire. And all in all, this level looks really cool. And it probably has my favorite music out of basically all of Battle Out of Hell. I don't really like some of the upcoming music, unfortunately. But this song in particular feels a lot more like Painkiller than some of the other songs in this expansion pack. So... There you go. Basically waiting until we get to a point with a lot of enemies again before I use my tarot cards again. 
I'm just gonna shoot these projectiles. Every now and then you'll see me killing an enemy, and it might not be immediately obvious how this is happening. The enemies here are actually shooting at each other as well and slowly killing each other. Which is also why I'm not really using the freeze gun at all, because obviously you could just do this. And there's with a lot of enemies, you'll just end up accidentally killing them because other enemies are shooting at them, and then they'll just die immediately as well. But there's also the fact that there's a bunch of enemies that are on the rails, and you just drive through them with the little roller coaster over here. And there's the Ferris wheel I was talking about. But the moment you touch anything with this, like, train cart, the enemy just instantly dies. So it's kind of unavoidable that you're going to kill a whole bunch of enemies while sitting on this thing. Like, look at this. <laughs> there's no way that I can save these guys just because they're in the middle of the train track right here. And there's just nothing I can do. And because we didn't kill the clowns at the start, we're probably going to be at around, like, 77 kills or something like that when we beat the level. So there is obviously some room to, like, kill some of these guys. And apparently I used my tarot cards three times already. The thing is, though, some of those clowns at the start, they sometimes sort of just walk into a pit and die by themselves. Which is why I'm not really risking shooting at anything here. Like... I should have plenty of health, and we should be nearing the end pretty soon, so... I'm just not gonna worry about it, and I'm just gonna ride out this little roller coaster ride over here. Until we get to the end. Which I can't imagine taking much longer over here. But until then, we're just gonna make sure we shoot as many projectiles as possible. And... We should be fine. And we can enjoy these faces at the back of the cart as well. Look a little bit scary. Kinda like the rest of this place, I suppose. It is not really the most kid-friendly area. Now oh, we killed 78. I think that may have been the last one. I was pretty close with 77, though. <laughs> but we killed less than 88 enemies, which is the most important part. And we got all the secret areas, and we got all the holy items. And doing so unlocks Magic Gun. Never waste any ammo. It's another gold tarot card, I believe. At least I assume it's a golden tarot card. I'm actually going to check that. Yeah, it is. And when you activate it, you basically won't use up any ammo whenever you're firing. Which I, again, don't really care much for. I don't really care much for the ammo multiplier type things. I have this one equipped just because it's alright. And we haven't really had a reason to use anything else so far. But... I don't think Magic Gun is very useful for the most part. There is obviously an exception which is coming up because the next level's card unlocking status is finish the level using Bolt Gun only. And then it might be useful to have some extra ammo here and there if you are actually running low because it is actually very possible for the next level to start running low on ammo. But overall, you should be fine, really. But that is where I'm going to end the video. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. And the next time we play, we are going to do Battle Out of Hell Level 3, which is the lab. And I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.